I ended up with some extra tiles when I bought my house, so I thought it might be fun to build a, a bathroom scale that fit right in in the bathroom, sort of a stealth scale. So I got one of the tiles and ordered a bunch of parts and came up with a uh, reasonably accurate scale that cost me about $15 to make. And it probably works probably about as well as a $15 scale. So, but it was fun to make and it looks good in the bathroom. Then I'll show you, uh, I'll show you how it all goes together. Here's the scale. <clears throat> Let's look at what went into it. Standard tile, an OLED display, and I 3D printed a little frame for it just because I could. Back here you have the innards, or well, yeah, you have what would typically be the innards of a standard bathroom scale. You pull any scale apart and you're going to find, any cheap scale at least, you're going to find this. Now I bought them all, I bought all the bits separately, but a good way to go would be to pulling a scale apart because the wiring would be done for you. So what we have here are load cells, one in each corner obviously. I got them off eBay, the link's in the uh, description. I think they were dollar something each. You need to run the load cells through an amplifier because the voltage change as they flex is so tiny that the Arduino can't deal with it. It just it would be an inaccurate mess. It's inaccurate already even with this thing, but it's livable with this. So uh, this is an HX711. I don't even know. I think I call it an amplifier. I don't know. If you search for that HX711, you'll come up with it. Again, a $2 item. And that goes to an Arduino Pro. Focus, focus, what's focus? But it can go to any old Arduino that you want. It doesn't really matter. This, these are just nice and flat. I like them. Why is it not focusing? So it doesn't like the tile. There we go. And then, like I said, it goes to an OLED display. And it's all powered by a little LiPo here. <clears throat> The tricky part, the part that we will discuss really, um, is the wiring up of the four load cells. And if this thing will focus, I'll show you how to wire up the load cells. And this will apply broadly to uh, many three-wire load cells, but not all. And it will reply. It will apply directly to mine. So if you go on eBay and follow the link to purchase, or if you end up with similar, very similar looking load cells, they probably wire up this way. In each corner we have a load cell. In each corner we have a half of a bridge, and we're going to wire all those four bridges up into one Wheatstone bridge. I don't know why it's called a Wheatstone bridge. That is what it is. Search online for that. You'll find many topics. This is one load cell in this corner. This load cell has three wires, two resistors. This wire is red. Let's say uh, this wire is white and this wire is black. I believe that is actually the way that it is. Let me look. Yep, that's the way it is. So we're gonna wire this load cell to this load cell and it's going to go like this. Black, white to white. Lower right corner load cell. You guessed it, black, white. Final load cell, oops. Yes, white, red, black. Ring around, that's how we do it. White, white, black, black, white, white, black, black leaving the reds out and these are pairs this is a pair this is a pair and there will be signal plus minus and voltage plus minus <clears throat> you may have to figure out 
right? You may have to figure out your own pairs, what they are. If you're, if you ended up with something that's exactly like mine, this one will be a, um, what's this one? This one is, shit, let me think. This one is a voltage. This one's a voltage. I'm going to say plus, I'm guessing. That makes this one a voltage negative. This one is a signal negative, and this one's a signal plus. If you don't know your pairs, it's black and white is a pair. Right? If you don't know your pairs, here's how you figure it out. You have your load cell. I'm going to draw it. You have your load cell, which looks like that, maybe. And it has three wires coming out of it. In my case, I had a... A black, a red, and a white wire. What you do is you take your multimeter, careful, careful, you take your multimeter, put it on resistance, and you measure these two. If, like mine, you've got a fairly obvious one, two, three wires, try the two outside wires first. So I'd measure those guys. I found I had a resistance of 1600. That's actually about what I found, I think. And I measured these two. And I found I had a resistance of about 800. So I was told where you have about the double the resistance or the 1600, that is your pairs. So these two are my pairs. So that's one way to do it. As you're doing that, if you want for fun, you can push on the cell and you can see if these values change. And that's way that's also a way you can determine whether you've got your plus or minuses, which one is plus and minus, because one is going to be excited being pushed and one is going to be excited being pulled, I guess. Like, you know, you can push on a load cell or you could apply negative force to it. Pull. <laughs> and you are going to get a resistance value that goes either positive or negative. You can play with that. I never really got that to work reliably, so I didn't really care. I just guessed at my pairs, and because uh, there wasn't that many options, and uh, I nailed it. So your pairs are going to go into your amplifier, your HX, this thing, and you can see we have E and A plus and minus. So you ease your signals, I think, and the A's of the voltages, I think. Like I said, I just kind of guessed on mine. You can, you can read the spec sheet for this. Um, and my red pair, so red pair, red pair. If it didn't produce a signal that made sense, well, flip them around, try the other ones. You've only got what, like four combinations. And on the other side of that, we go to our Arduino. So we have a volt in. To this so out of the Arduino use the 5 volt focus use the uh, 5 volt out from the Arduino what the hell down a bit yeah. and a ground and two digitals clock and dat I don't know what dat stands for digital I don't know something and I use pins 2 and 3 but it doesn't matter use whatever pins you want as long as they're digital pins I guess and it wired up is this gonna focus yeah it looks like that. And then out of the Arduino, we've got our, our four um, for the OLED, which is in the sketch, and we're not really covering OLED here. You can look that up. It's super easy to get OLEDs working. And there's libraries for the HX711, and there's libraries for the OLED. When you get it working, you, you've got to calibrate it. I'm calibrating it. For one thing, I'll let you know that maybe it's just mine. I don't know. Maybe it's because I got the cheapest of everything, but it is not incredibly accurate. It's good enough to weigh like myself within half a pound, and I'm happy with it. It wasn't about accuracy. I didn't really care. I just wanted to build scale out of the tile I had. Um, but if you're looking for ultimate accuracy, you maybe want to in invest in better sense or better load cells. Because um, I've heard that that makes a big deal. If you get better load cells, you get more accurate um, results. Makes sense to me. So when you go to calibrate it, 
we'll run the sketch through and uh, I'll show you later. But um, you start up the sketch with nothing and you put a known weight on it. So, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you've got that has weight on it. I had a 16 kilo kettlebell that I put on it, so I know that it weighs 32 and a half pounds. Is that right? 35.2 pounds. It weighs 35.2 pounds. And then you enter, well, like I said, we'll look at that. You enter a value, you enter a calibration value to make sure that it matches that. But the one thing with these load cells is they creep. Um, that's well known. Uh, I don't know why they do. They heat up or something like that. I don't know. But um, So the more longer you leave weight on it, the value just keeps creeping up. And there's fancy ways to compensate for that. Um, but we won't get into that here. So don't use this for anything really crucial. It's just for fun mainly. So with the sketch that I will link to, you're going to have to enter a calibration factor that's suitable to uh, whatever the hell you come up with. So um, this is my calibration factor that came pretty close to working. And the way you figure it out is pretty simple. So uh, let me just comment this out. And let's upload that. So now we're going to do a serial output, like as quick as the little thing can generate it. And we'll get a reading and we'll put in, uh, wait for it to finish uploading, it's uploaded. No weight on the scale right now. It thinks it's roughly zero-ish. I'm going to put my 35.2 pound weight on there. So it kind of got 35-ish, 34, 9, 35, 35, 1, you know, 35.2, that's pretty accurate. But I'll just show you how it changes. So I'll take that off. Stop that. Let's just put this down on zero, zero, let's say. 11,000 instead of 1190, negative 11,000 instead of negative. Compile that. So it finishes uploading. All right, turn the monitor back on. Put my 35.2 weight on. And you can see I've, I've messed, you know, I've adjusted it. Basically. I've screwed it up, but that's the point. That's the idea. You just keep messing with that number until your known weight is uh, accurate. And I think, given that it's not super accurate, I would use a big weight. I wouldn't use like one pound or something. I would use a, a significant weight. We'll put this back to uh, what it was. 980. Uh, I can comment this out. I don't need to see that anymore. And then I'll mention the sample rate. So right uh, when we were doing our serial print, we were sampling as quickly as it could with this get units one. It's probably smarter to do a bunch of samples and do an average. So luckily the library has a cool feature to do that. So if you have a get units of say 20, I believe it does 20 samples and then averages. And you can do more than that or less than that, whatever you like. So 20 samples takes about half a second to a second to do. And then you get a, a slightly more accurate um, result back. Yeah, that's it for the sketch, pretty simple.